Uh, OK. Um, under the, the uh, definition of acute coronary syndromes, we have uh, uh, several pathological conditions, uh, uh, like unstable angina, myocardial infarction, uh, both uh, ST segment elevation, myocardial infarction, and uh, non-ST segment elevation, and also uh, sudden coronary death. All of these conditions are characterized by uh, the uh, presence of uh, uh, acute myocardial ischemia. Uh, acute coronary syndromes may be associated with uh, significant myocardial necrosis, especially myocardial infarction, so uh, the uh, consequences of, of uh, 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 myocardial ischemia in these conditions are important because we uh, lose some uh, piece of art and uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, contractile uh, uh, parenchyma is uh, replaced by, uh, by a scar. And the other concept that is very important that uh, despite uh, uh, great advancements have been made in the uh, diagnosis and treatment of these conditions, the uh, mortality and the morbidity of acute coronary syndromes uh, are still very high. Uh, I think that between 9 and 19 percent of the patients with the first diagnosis of acute coronary syndrome die within the six months uh, from the initial episode. And uh, uh, almost half of these deaths occur during the first 30 days. So we are facing a uh, conditions associated with uh, uh, a high morbidity and mortality. Now, uh, with few exceptions, nearly all cases of acute coronary syndromes recognize atherosclerosis as the underlying pathological lesion. Uh, cardiologists have a very simple mind. And often, they uh, fall in love with uh, ideas. Uh, for example, uh, about 20, 25 years ago, uh, a new concept emerged uh, that is a coronary spasm. At that time, coronary spasm was probably considered the, uh, uh, if not the most frequent, but one of the most frequent causes of acute coronary syndromes. We know now that uh, coronary spasm is a very rare condition that may lead to uh, acute coronary syndromes. But in the uh, vast majority of the cases, uh, the uh, 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 underlying pathological lesion is atherosclerosis. Uh, the atherosclerotic plaque uh, almost always in uh, acute coronary syndrome uh, complicates. That is, uh, can uh, uh, get uh, a uh, ulceration, rupture, disruption, so that the uh, subendothelial tissue is exposed to the uh, flowing blood, and this triggers uh, and activates the uh, coagulation, coagulation cascade and platelets, which ultimately may uh, form an intracoronary thrombus, which is responsible for the sudden interruption of coronary flow. The uh, clinical picture is determined by the uh, severity and the uh, duration of the uh, ischemia, which is uh, caused by the uh, uh, coronary obstruction. OK, my uh, interest in the pathophysiology of uh, acute coronary syndromes uh, 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 originated in the early 80s, so quite a long ago, uh, when uh, I was lucky enough to be accepted in uh, Jim Wilson's laboratory in Dallas at that time. And uh, that group of uh, researchers at that time were uh, focused on the uh, pathophysiology of uh, acute coronary syndromes. And this was really uh, a very important piece of work they published in 1982 in the uh, New England Journal of Medicine, demonstrating that in patients with uh, unstable angina, the uh, intracoronary production of thromboxane uh, A2 measured uh, through the, uh, the uh, the thromboxin B2 levels, which is the stable metabolite of uh, thromboxin E2, were uh, much, much higher in the coronary circulation as compared to patients uh, with stable chronic angina. Now, since thromboxin A2 is produced almost uh, entirely by activated platelets, this was the first demonstration that in acute coronary syndromes, in within the coronary circulation, there was a significant activation of platelets. Uh, 
following that paper, many other groups of investigators uh, uh, followed this, uh, uh, this finding. And in this uh, later paper uh, published by the uh, group of uh, Sherman in Boston, uh, they demonstrated using uh, um, a uh, uh, technique that is called coronary angioscopy. It is a, a small fiber optic uh, angioscope that is inserted within the uh, coronary arteries. They showed unequivocally that in patients with a stable angina, there was a highly prevalence of an intracoronary thrombus, here indicated as uh, with, with the T. Uh, this is the plaque, which is uh, uh, yellow, and that's the lumen of the coronary artery, which is almost uh, completely occluded by the uh, thrombus. This, of course, in up to 80% of the patients with unstable angina, and almost 0% of patients have uh, this uh, a finding uh, uh, within the coronary circulation. So again, this was a direct demonstration that in acute coronary syndrome there is activation of platelets and of uh, the coagulation cascade. Um, uh, wh when I was in uh, Jim Willerson lab, uh, we developed a, uh, an experimental model of acute coronary syndromes uh, originally in the uh, canine heart uh, by uh, uh, provoking a, a, an endothelial damage of the uh, coronary artery and uh, applying a uh, plastic constrictor around it so that we uh, were mimicking the uh, condition of uh, uh, acute coronary syndrome in humans. And uh, if we measure flow with the uh, Doppler flow probe uh, positioned uh, around the coronary artery, we have a pattern like this. We have a, a, a progressive decrease in blood flow velocity followed by sudden uh, restorations of uh, blood flow to normal value, and then the uh, patterns uh, uh, repeats. And uh, this pattern of flow is very, very stable. It can go on for, for hours and is extremely platelet dependent. Uh, indeed, if we uh, give aspirin uh, during the uh, cycle flow variations, during the process of intracoronary thrombus formation. We have a complete restoration in the uh, majority of the animals of, the, of a normal pattern of flow, indicating that in this model, uh, activation of platelets is basically responsible of uh, the um, uh, uh, alterations in flow that we observe, mimicking what we uh, have in uh, the human beings. Now, uh, at that time, uh, we had uh, um, uh, quite an old view of the, uh, uh, of the uh, uh, thrombosis. Basically, uh, what we thought activated thrombosis was the endothelial damage, which, as a consequence, exposed tissue factor to the flowing blood. blood. Uh, tissue factor is uh, uh, a transmembrane protein expressed uh, by cells not in contact with, the, with blood. Uh, so uh, when tissue factor is exposed, uh, it binds factor 7A from the circulation, and this complex can activate the uh, other uh, factors of the coagulation, basically uh, factor 10 and factor 5, uh, so that the uh, prothrombin complex uh, is formed which finally is then responsible for the uh, generation of the uh, uh, thrombin at the site of the injury. Uh, the uh, model that, the animal model that I just showed you the, was very useful to uh, test antithrombotic drugs, but also very useful to understand mechanisms. Because uh, we now know, uh, to make a very long story short, that the uh, two components uh, of the uh, thrombosis, that is coagulation and platelets, are not uh, separated, but uh, are two highly integrated systems, so that platelets represents also um, an important surface where coagulation factors uh, concentrate and uh, uh, get together, so there is a burst of thrombin generation at the site of platelet adhesion, and uh, the, the, the uh, integration between the two systems is demonstrated by the fact that in the same model that I just showed you, if we interfere with the function of tissue factor, in this case by giving a monoclonal antibody that uh, prevents binding of factor seven 
to uh, tissue factor in this, uh, with this kind of intervention, we also get a potent antithrombotic effect uh, in the uh, experimental animals. So not only platelets, but also the uh, coagulation is important in this model. Uh, then uh, many groups of investigators demonstrated that tissue factor is highly uh, concentrated in human atherosclerotic plaques. This is uh, the first paper that uh, demonstrated that this was uh, uh, an atherosclerotic plaque obtained at autopsy of patients with, uh, uh, who died uh, because of uh, a myocardial infarction. And uh, you see that uh, this uh, uh, reddish color uh, is uh, re represents area where tissue factor is highly concentrated within the plaque. Uh, this was also demonstrated by uh, Vincenzo Toschi in uh, 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 Juan Badimon's lab, and also by uh, Diego Ardissino in Parma. Uh, he demonstrated that tissue factor is present in human atherosclerotic plaques, not only as an antigen, but also is functional uh, because uh, uh, this expressed tissue factor retains its uh, 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 procoagulant activity. And in this, in this paper, interestingly, we can, uh, we can see that both tissue factor antigen and activity is much higher in uh, atherosclerotic plaques obtained from patients with uh, uh, unstable angina as compared to uh, patients with chronic stable angina. So in the acute phase, there is a some, some kind of uh, upregulation of, uh, of tissue factor within the uh, atherosclerotic plaque. Um, I just said that tissue factor is a transmembrane protein, so basically it binds uh, factor 7A uh, and then activates 10 to 10A and so on uh, to the uh, uh, formation of thrombin. Of thrombin. Uh, but in our opinion, tissue factor may also have some kind of uh, receptor properties. So what is the uh, consequence of binding of factor 7A to tissue factor in the cytoplasm? And these are uh, some experiments conducted by, uh, uh, by Lorenzo Cirillo in our lab uh, about 10 years ago, 12 years ago, in which he demonstrated that uh, uh, the binding of tissue factor with uh, uh, factor 7A induces smooth muscle cell proliferation in vitro, uh, which is uh, uh, dose dependent and can be inhibited almost completely by administration of AP1, again, the antibody against tissue factor, or by uh, uh, using a uh, uh, factor 7, which uh, chemically was inactivated, so was devoid of uh, uh, its enzymatic activity. This uh, proliferation uh, uh, is induced via uh, activation of some MAP kinases like uh, ERK, JUNK, and CIJUN. And uh, you can see that after stimulation with uh, factor 7A, uh, uh, phosphor gets activated within the uh, smooth muscle cell. Now, another interesting condition in, in cardiology is the uh, 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 ischemia and reperfusion. You know that now the, uh, uh, the uh, best therapy for uh, acute myocardial infarction is uh, primary PTCA or thrombolysis. That is, we try to get as soon as possible a reperfusion of the ischemic area. But this is associated, as you know, uh, uh, with the uh, uh, generation of oxygen-free radicals within the, uh, uh, the coronary circulation, oxygen-free radicals which can induce also a specific uh, uh, reperfusion damage. Uh, in, this, in this paper, we uh, uh, demonstrated that um, uh, in vitro uh, endothelial cells exposed to uh, oxygen-free radicals, in this case, uh, uh, generated by the uh, xanthin, xanthin oxidase system, uh, activate the uh, uh, transcription of tissue factor which normally is, is blocked, is repressed in endothelial cells because they are in contact with blood. And that this occurs also uh, in, uh, in vitro hearts, uh, uh, the, the lung and perfused, 
subjected to uh, five or 10 minutes of this chemia and then reperfusion, we have, uh, uh, as you can see, within the coronary circulation, activation of uh, uh, an induction of tissue factor activity, which is uh, also, uh, therefore, uh, a, functional, a functional protein. OK, uh, uh, coming back for a moment uh, on the, uh, uh, on the uh, plaque. So what we uh, knew at that time was that uh, a disrupted plaque uh, exposed uh, the prothrombotic substances to the flowing blood and then activated coagulation and, and platelets. But what really happened within uh, unstable plaques at that time was, uh, was, was not known. Uh, it was hypothesized that uh, uh, it was not the uh, degree of luminal narrowing induced by the atherosclerotic plaque, but rather the functional state of the plaque itself, uh, uh, which was uh, responsible for the uh, clinical picture, chronic versus a, uh, an acute uh, coronary syndrome. And uh, indeed, uh, we uh, uh, know that the uh, severity of the coronary plaque is not correlated with the uh, presence, with the occurrence uh, uh, clinically of uh, a coronary syndromes. Uh, this is a very important paper. It's, uh, uh, it's um, uh, a paper who was published in the mid-90s, but clearly demonstrated that if we take a group of uh, patients undergoing coronary angiography, and in which we can see uh, uh, the presence of uh, several coronary plaques within the coronary circulation, and then we follow uh, during the year uh, uh, these patients, we uh, see that those patients that will develop in the future uh, an acute myocardial infarction are those patients in the majority of the cases that had a uh, stenosis uh, not very severe, less than 50% the uh, luminal diameter, which means that uh, the, 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 the old concept at that time w w was, not, was not true. That is, uh, it's not, um, uh, not the uh, uh, more severe plaques that will develop uh, a, uh, 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 an acute myocardial infarction. So, uh, uh, we went from the historical model of the atherosclerosis, uh, uh, which considered atherosclerosis simply as a passive accumulation of lipids and other uh, blood-borne substances in the uh, subendothelium uh, until a, a very severe plaque is formed. And eventually, uh, uh, we can have also a complete occlusion of, of the vessel <coughs> uh, to a new paradigm that is uh, uh, a new, a new term was, was coined, this, the atherosthrombosis, uh, which uh, focused on the uh, biological activity of the plaque, such that even a very, very small plaque can complicate, can disrupt, and uh, uh, this very small plaque can uh, induce the formation of an intracoronary thrombus, uh, going, therefore, to a uh, clinical conditions, uh, uh, the acute coronary syndrome, uh, can, which can be sudden and very, very uh, uh, dangerous. Um, like I said, uh, cardiologists uh, are simple-minded. Uh, about 30 years ago, uh, following the uh, publication of the uh, most important epidemiological papers like the uh, Framingham study and so on, uh, we thought that simply intervening on the uh, classical uh, coronary risk factors, uh, hypercholesterolemia, hypertension, obesity, diabetes, and so on, could, if not eliminate, uh, significantly reduce the uh, burden of uh, uh, atherosclerotic coronary disease. And uh, this, uh, uh, this, this optimistic expectation, I have to say, uh, uh, has been largely unmet. And why is that? That's because there are some other factors that uh, uh, are coming to play in the uh, genesis of an acute coronary syndrome. We have, for example, the uh, genetic background of the patient. All of us know examples of patients with many, many risk factors 
who are very well do not develop uh, cardiovascular disease until they die at the age of 90 or so. And on the other end of the uh, spectrum, we have patients without significant risk factors who develop a myocardial infarction uh, uh, at, f at the age of 40, or uh, uh, very young anyway. Uh, and this depends by the uh, interaction of the uh, genetic background and uh, the environment, uh, or if you prefer, the uh, presence or absence of uh, the traditional risk factors. But uh, we believe that the uh, vascular inflammation, the activation of the immune system, as I will show you in a moment, uh, the presence of vulnerable plaques. This is a new uh, term coined uh, in uh, uh, Juan Badimon's laboratory when uh, Giovanni was there uh, working with them. Uh, plays probably the most important role in determining the conversion of a chronic condition uh, that is the presence of a chronic coronary plaque to an acute condition such as, uh, uh, such as uh, acute coronary syndromes. And of course, there is also the importance of a so-called aggressive blood. We now know that uh, there are some conditions that set the, uh, uh, the stage for uh, a uh, hypercoagulable blood, which is also uh, uh, a very bad thing uh, under these uh, circumstances. So the concept of uh, vulnerability. Uh, I believe the, uh, the challenge uh, of cardiology for the next 10, year, 10 years uh, is to go uh, from uh, a culprit plaque toward uh, a uh, uh, vulnerable plaque. The uh, culprit plaque is a retrospective terminology. Uh, a culprit plaque can be identified during coronary angiography and uh, angioplasty or can be identified by pathologist when the uh, patient died but this is something that has already occurred. The uh, challenge here is the uh, uh, try to identify vulnerable plaques. So that is, plaques that have a high probability of rupture and therefore to cause a, uh, 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 a heart attack, a coronary event. Uh, if we uh, will be able to identify vulnerable plaques, probably uh, most of the uh, uh, the myocardial infarction that we see now could be uh, prevented. And that's really, uh, I think, a, a very important challenge. So in other words, we go from this situation, a stable plaque, a complicated plaque, formation of a thrombus, and uh, if, we, uh, if you prefer, we can, we can also imagine a, a, a sleeping volcano and uh, the uh, uh, volcano that erupts at, at this moment, Unfortunately, we cannot foresee neither one of these uh, conditions, but uh, it could be very important to, be, uh, to be, uh, set the stage to do that. Uh, from a morphological point of view, we know that uh, uh, vulnerable, vulnerable plaques are quite different from stable plaques. Stable plaques are characterized by a very thick fibrous cap. Uh, the, uh, 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 smooth muscle cells are quite present. The uh, cellularity is very well represented. The uh, lipidic core is uh, uh, quite small. And most importantly, we have no or very few inflammatory cells infiltrating the plaque. On the other hand, the uh, vulnerable plaque is characterized by a thin fibrous cap, less smooth muscle cells, uh, a uh, very large lipid core, but uh, most of all, we have uh, many inflammatory cells infiltrating these plaques. These plaques are quite uh, vulnerable to uh, rupture. The problem is that with the uh, uh, imaging techniques that we have now, we cannot uh, look into the plaque uh, without killing the patient. Uh, well, I mean, we can get these plaques at autopsy, but at the moment, with the uh, non-invasive imaging, we are not able to uh, 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 distinguish between these two types of plaques. Uh, the reasons why uh, uh, a plaque ruptures uh, um, are many, and uh, all of them can be 
uh, can be uh, taken into account, uh, cap fatigue, uh, smoking, diabetes, and so on. But we believe that in this phenomenon, inflammation uh, plays a major role. And uh, when we uh, uh, talk about inflammation, uh, immediately we think about CRP. C-reactive protein is uh, uh, um, an active phase uh, protein that can be measured in the, uh, in the blood and reflects the inflammatory status of, uh, uh, of a given patient. Uh, uh, CRP for, uh, for cardiologists have become very, very important because the uh, group of uh, uh, Paul Riedeker in Boston and others uh, clearly have demonstrated that measurement of plasma levels of CRP is a very uh, precise in identifying the risk profile of uh, uh, a population uh, of developing a future myocardial infarction. Uh, you can see here, but there are really very many, many, many uh, papers published uh, in which if we uh, divide the patients in quartiles, those who show the highest levels of uh, uh, plasma, CRP, are those patients that have the uh, highest probability uh, of developing a, an acute myocardial infarction. But the question is, uh, since uh, CRP is uh, basically produced in the liver in response to some pro-inflammatory cytokines, mainly uh, IL-6 and uh, IL-1 uh, beta, the uh, question is, that can we have uh, an extrahepatic production of CRP? Can we have a production of CRP within the uh, inflamed coronary vessels? And the idea for that uh, came to us when one of our uh, associates, Paolo Calabro, uh, in uh, Jim Willison's lab, uh, demonstrated that in smooth muscle cells in vitro, we can have a significant production of uh, CRP in response to uh, IL-1 beta and uh, IL-6. And this was the first demonstration that uh, CRP can be produced in uh, uh, cells other than the uh, hepatocytes. So we wanted to uh, test the hypothesis that this phenomenon was also uh, present in vivo in patients with uh, acute coronary syndromes. Now, uh, for, for the non-cardiologists, I have to explain this slide uh, uh, a little in detail so that we understand what, what, what we did. Uh, we did samples, blood samples, from the coronary sinus and the uh, ascending aorta of patients with different uh, pathological conditions. Uh, the uh, uh, sampling in the coronary sinus uh, uh, gave us the uh, opportunity to measure uh, substances and to isolate cells directly from the coronary circulation. And the uh, reason why we measure also simultaneously uh, the, the, the same thing in blood obtained from the uh, ascending aorta is that we have um, uh, each, each patient is uh, its self-control. So we can uh, directly compare what happens in, within the coronary circulation. Okay, in these experiments, we measured uh, uh, CRP in the blood obtained from the coronary sinus and the ascending aorta in different patient population. Uh, these are controls. These are patients with uh, stable chronic angina in uh, whom the uh, uh, culprit lesion was uh, in the right coronary artery and in the left coronary artery. And these two groups, finally, uh, are acute coronary syndrome patients, again, with the culprit lesion in the right coronary artery and in the left coronary artery. <coughs> Why was that? That's because the coronary sinus drains blood only from the left uh, coronary artery. The right coronary artery directly drains into the left atrium and is a sort of internal control just to prove the concept that uh, uh, our hypothesis was right. So, the uh, zero line identifies uh, 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 no difference between the uh, levels in the uh, ascending aorta and in the coronary sinus. Up to uh, positive values means that there is an active production within the uh, coronary circulation, okay? And, as we can see, only in patients with 
acute coronary syndrome and the uh, culprit lesion localized in the left coronary artery, we had a positive uh, production of CRP within the coronary circulation. This finding was not observed in patients with chronic uh, stable angina and in patients with acute coronary syndrome in whom the uh, culprit was localized in the right coronary artery. So uh, I think this provides a, a, a convincing evidence that in patients with acute coronary syndrome, uh, there is an active production of CRP within the uh, culprit lesion within the uh, coronary circulation. Um, next question was, uh, okay, uh, CRP is released in the coronary circulation of uh, patients with acute coronary syndromes, but uh, is simply a, a, an index of inflammation or CRP also does something uh, uh, within the uh, uh, the uh, coronary circulation. Uh, in these experiments, uh, we uh, put um, both endothelial cells and smooth muscle cells in vitro and uh, challenged them with uh, uh, different concentrations of uh, uh, CRP. And we see that there is a, a production of uh, uh, tissue factor, an expression of uh, tissue factor on the uh, surface of these cells, uh, dose dependent. Uh, in response to, uh, in response to um, uh, CRP. Also, uh, another substance very important in the uh, genesis of uh, uh, acute coronary syndrome are uh, some uh, matrix degrading uh, uh, enzymes like metalloprotease. And uh, it has been demonstrated that uh, in many patients with uh, acute coronary syndrome, there is a, a uh, uh, overexpression of uh, uh, metalloprotease, especially in the shoulder regions of the plaque where the uh, shear forces are, are greater. Uh, so uh, in, this, uh, in this other paper, in these other experiments, uh, we challenged the uh, uh, smooth muscle cells uh, with uh, uh, C-reactive protein, and they expressed, in this case, uh, uh, metalloprotease 9, which is uh, also uh, involved in the, uh, possibly involved in the rupture of the plaque. And uh, interestingly, if we uh, uh, compare, uh, if we uh, try to uh, get the relationship between the uh, transcoronary uh, levels of CRP, these are patients now, not the in, in vitro experiments, and uh, the uh, transcoronary levels of uh, metalloprotease, we have a nice relationship uh, indicating that the more uh, CRP is produced within the coronary circulation, the more uh, metalloprotease 9 is produced, is released in the uh, circulation. Uh, this is a paper we did in uh, collaboration with the uh, uh, group of Perugia, Professor Gresele and Associates. Uh, this was uh, focused on, on, on a different uh, uh, metalloprotease, metalloprotease 2, which is produced by uh, smooth muscle cells, but also is released uh, by platelets during aggregation. And uh, uh, also, this is also a, a link, a possible link between inflammation and uh, uh, platelet aggregation. Um, okay. I think that it's quite convincing that uh, there is uh, something happening at the level of an atherosclerotic plaque uh, when the uh, plaque complicates uh, activation of coagulation cascade and platelets uh, is responsible for the clinical occurrence um, uh, of an acute coronary syndrome. But probably the uh, one million dollar question is why does a plaque complicate? Which is the reason? Uh, and uh, uh, we believe, and uh, I'll show you some data uh, about this, uh, that uh, the immune system with, uh, uh, particularly uh, with uh, T lymphocytes, is probably the uh, director of the orchestra. It's probably the first trigger that is responsible for the uh, complication uh, of the plaque. 
that the immune system was involved in the uh, pathogenesis of acute coronary sy syndrome is not, is not uh, uh, a concept of ours. Uh, uh, there are many papers uh, uh, in, in suggesting the possibility that activation of uh, the immune system was uh, um, uh, at least associated with the clinical occurrence uh, of uh, acute coronary syndromes. This, this, this work, however, uh, have the, uh, the disadvantage of uh, focusing either or on uh, uh, patients uh, who died or uh, in, in patients uh, uh, through uh, uh, obtaining peripheral blood samples. So we uh, really did not have a precise idea of what was going on within the plaque. Uh, this is uh, uh, just to uh, remind us how the, uh, uh, the uh, immune system works. We have the uh, humoral response arm and the cell mediated response uh, so that the uh, naive T cell uh, uh, binds the, uh, the, the uh, antigen through the antigen uh, presenting cell and then we can have different, different, uh, the diverse differentiation of the, uh, of the T cells. And basically the uh, uh, T lymphocytes works uh, through this structure, which is the T cell receptor. Uh, it is a uh, heterodimer comprised of the uh, beta and alpha subunit, which can be studied uh, through very uh, uh, um, complicated uh, molecular biology techniques. The uh, T, -cell, uh, T cell receptor uh, is, is a very interesting structure because we have about 25 families uh, of, of T cell re receptors. And uh, uh, the, uh, during the, um, the thymic maturation, the uh, lymphocytes undergo a complex uh, T TCR gene rearrangement so that almost uh, a uh, uh, infinite uh, possibility of interaction and different recombination uh, can occur at the site of the binding of the antigen. That, that is this one, the CDR3 uh, region. Uh, with uh, um, some primates, uh, we can study this region. We can have a family of uh, CDR3 regions uh, 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 amplified. And uh, usually what we have in unstimulated lymphocytes is a pattern like this. We have different families, which is uh, uh, normally, they are uh, uh, normally expressed in a, in a Gaussian uh, way. When the lymphocytes are stimulated uh, by a specific antigen, we have a pattern like this. We have a profound uh, derangement of the uh, normal distribution of the uh, uh, BV families, uh, representing uh, a clone or a few clone um, proliferation uh, after uh, challenging with the, with the antigen. And uh, applying this technique to uh, what uh, a few years ago was uh, a revascularization technique, uh, which is uh, uh, directional coronary atherectomy, uh, which uh, gave us the opportunity of getting some plaque fragments from human beings. Uh, this is the uh, catheter used to uh, cut, literally cut the atherosclerotic plaque. Retrieving the uh, catheter allowed us to have some uh, fragment of the plaque. Uh, which are shown here. Uh, applying the uh, uh, spectrotyping uh, technique, which I just showed you, we, uh, we were able to see that, uh, first of all, within plaque obtained from patients uh, with stable angina, the uh, number of uh, uh, copies of the uh, TCR receptors uh, was very low as compared to uh, a tremendous increase in, uh, in uh, TCR uh, mRNA within the plaque in patients with uh, uh, acute coronary syndromes. But what is most important uh, is the uh, pattern of expression of, uh, uh, of the uh, TCI receptor. You can see that in uh, stable plaque, the uh, message is very low, and when present, 
uh, is always uh, following a normal distribution, whereas in patients with uh, acute coronary syndrome, you can see that there is a profound uh, derangement of the uh, TCR repertoire within the plaque. What is really uh, interesting in, uh, in uh, this paper is uh, the observation of one patient in whom it was possible to obtain two plaques. One unstable, that is uh, uh, this one uh, on the left coronary uh, descending artery, and one stable in the right coronary artery. Uh, if, as you can see here, we have, uh, again, a profound arrangement of the uh, TCL receptor repertoire, uh, which was not present in the stable plaque. It was an, an anecdotal finding, of course, but this finding suggested us that the uh, uh, activation of the immune system was not something systemic, uh, uh, occurring systemically, but was local occurring. That is exactly at the site where the uh, uh, atherosclerotic plaque complicated. And uh, indeed, uh, other other groups demonstrated that in patients with acute coronary syndromes, there is no single uh, uh, plaque. Or, I mean, uh, we have many patients in which there is uh, uh, ulceration and rupture and complication of the atherosclerotic plaque in sites different from uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the one where the culprit lesion is, is present. And uh, also the um, uh, presence of uh, a, a rupture uh, coronary artery could be identified in a small percentage of patients, but could be identified also in patients with chronic stable angina, indicating that not all rupture plaques lead to a clinical occurrence of uh, acute coronary syndromes. And why is that? Our hypothesis is that uh, we must have some uh, given circumstances locally because uh, uh, then a clinical occurrence, uh, uh, an episode of acute coronary syndrome can occur. This may be due of the, uh, uh, for example, the uh, different cytokine expression milieu uh, within the coronary circulation because we know that uh, following stimulation uh, by the antigen, T cells can follow different, uh, different uh, pathways, uh, Th1, Th2, uh, Th17, and even uh, Treg, uh, which have a, a regulatory function uh, in the sense they tend to uh, turn off the, the uh, inflammation. In another series of, experiment, uh, of experiments, we measured uh, a, a panel of cytokines uh, within the coronary circulation of patients with uh, uh, stable angina and uh, acute coronary syndromes. And uh, uh, again, here, uh, getting sampling from the coronary sinus and the uh, ascending aorta. And we can see that in unstable patients, uh, we have uh, uh, an overproduction, for example, of uh, IL-1B, uh, IL-6, and especially of interferon gamma. Uh, we have patients here that uh, uh, show uh, 500 times levels of uh, uh, interferon gamma within the coronary circulation as compared to the uh, levels measured in the ascending aorta. In contrast, the uh, TH2 response uh, is uh, uh, quite blunted, and uh, particularly interesting is the uh, uh, less production of IL-10 in patients with uh, acute coronary syndromes. Uh, and as you know, IL-10 is a sort of uh, uh, extinguisher for the, for the um, uh, inflammation, for the activation of the immune system. Uh, IL-17, which is uh, one of the uh, newest uh, uh, cytokines uh, uh, studied, also associates with uh, uh, the uh, occurrence of uh, acute coronary syndromes. What is interesting here is that we have a kind of a, a bimodal distribution. Some patients uh, with acute coronary syndromes have very high levels of, of uh, uh, IL-17, and these patients are those 
that uh, uh, when come to the hospital have the uh, uh, highest level of uh, troponin I uh, as a, a marker of myocardial damage. So it seems that patients with the uh, uh, high level of IL-17 uh, might have a worse prognosis uh, uh, during the course of the, uh, of the hospital stay. Okay, uh, now, uh, coming back to the, uh, uh, to the uh, tissue factor and the activation of the uh, coagulation cascade, uh, we think that this molecule is particularly important because it occupies a central role uh, between inflammation, um, activation of the coagulation uh, within, the, uh, uh, within the coronary circulation. These uh, uh, are experiments that uh, Giovanni presented a uh, uh, couple of years ago at the uh, ACC meeting. Uh, uh, hopefully they will be uh, accepted. We sent them a, a, a revision just uh, a few days ago. Um, what Giovanni did was to, uh, uh, on one hand, in vitro, to challenge uh, uh, T cells uh, isolated from normal patients, challenge them with uh, uh, different cytokines, IL-6, IL-17, interferon gamma, TNF-alpha, and uh, an anti-CD328 antibody, uh, and uh, some kind of the uh, combination of these uh, cytokines. And, uh, Giovanni saw that uh, these uh, uh, cytokines can induce uh, T lymphocytes to express on their membranes tissue factor, okay? And uh, uh, the uh, uh, tissue factor expressed in the membrane is active because uh, it retains uh, procoagulant activity, as you can see. But what is uh, interesting is that, again, if we go to the uh, human model, sampling in the coronary sinus and the ascending aorta. We see that this phenomenon is uh, uh, also occurring in vivo in patients with acute coronary syndromes. This is the activity of tissue factor in lymphocytes isolated from patients. Again, patients with uh, uh, stable coronary artery disease do not have any difference in the coronary sinus as compared to the aorta, while there is a, a almost a, a doubling in the cells uh, isolated from the coronary sinus of patients with acute coronary syndromes as compared to the same patients uh, uh, where the sampling was obtained uh, in, in the aorta. This is true also at gene level and uh, also at the uh, protein expression level. So lymphocytes passing through the uh, uh, coronary circulation, they express tissue factor in patients with acute coronary syndrome, tissue factor which is functional, which is active, and is able to activate the uh, coagulation cascade. Uh, in the same uh, series of experiments, we also obtain some thrombotic material from patients uh, uh, coming to the hospital for because of a myocardial infarction and treated with uh, uh, primary angioplasty, uh, we can aspirate the uh, thrombus present uh, in the, uh, the coronary circulation with the catheter, and we can uh, save it, put in the formula and save it for further analysis. Uh, and we saw that uh, this is the uh, thrombus, uh, H and D coloration. This is an immune histochemistry staining for uh, CD3 positive cells. Some of them are positive for tissue factor. So also within the thrombus, we have activated lymphocytes expressing active tissue factor. And I think that this is almost convincing that uh, uh, this phenomenon is also occurring in, in patients. Um, okay, we are almost about to finish. Um, another $1 million question w uh, could be, okay, uh, you have convinced us the uh, immune system activates within the uh, coronary plaque, but uh, 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 what is the antigen responsible for the uh, activation of the uh, T cells? Uh, one good candidate could be oxidized LDL. We know that LDL are uh, uh, quite present in the uh, uh, coronary plaque. 
We know that this ambenothelial space is a highly oxidative one, and uh, uh, LDL get modified uh, there uh, by uh, getting oxidized. So this is another series of experiments that Giovanni did. Uh, we challenged smooth muscle cells with uh, um, LDL not oxidized, a sort of internal control, oxidized LDL at different uh, concentrations, and uh, uh, we measured the uh, expression of tissue factor at the uh, uh, protein uh, and gene level and uh, at the uh, level of activity. So this tissue factor that is expressed on the surface of, of, uh, uh, of lymphocytes is active and, and functioning. So uh, oxidized LDL uh, might be a good candidate. Of course, we have to uh, further investigate uh, uh, about this. And uh, uh, we are about to finish uh, uh, coming back for, for a moment to the role of platelets uh, in the pathophysiology of uh, acute coronary syndromes. Like, like we said, as we said, uh, they are very important. They get activated and they contribute to the uh, formation of the intracoronary thrombus. What puzzled us uh, was uh, uh, a paper uh, published a few years ago uh, in which the authors described the presence within the platelets of the uh, machinery for the uh, uh, metabolism of uh, microRNA. Uh, this was a puzzling finding because platelets, as you know, uh, do not have an, a nucleus. And uh, uh, we asked, therefore, what was this for? So the uh, question was, uh, uh, does the uh, pattern of uh, microRNA expression in platelets uh, changes during activation? And in collaboration with uh, uh, Professor Wise in, uh, in Salerno, we uh, published this paper in which platelets were activated by different stimuli, uh, collagen, ADP, and uh, uh, thrombin receptor activating peptide. And uh, the uh, pattern of uh, uh, microRNA expression was, uh, was studied. Now, I think uh, I do not need to explain here what the microRNA is. Uh, we uh, studied both the uh, pattern of expression of microRNA and the uh, changes in proteome. Uh, following activation uh, using uh, uh, eye track technique. And what we found was that uh, among uh, 380 uh, microRNAs that were detected within the uh, uh, activated platelets, 66 were uh, changed, were either up or down regulated uh, during activation by all three agonists used. And uh, if, uh, on one hand, we can explain uh, uh, why a microRNA uh, uh, goes down during activation, because, uh, as you know, platelets uh, degranulate and uh, can uh, release a, a variety of substances, including microRNAs. Those who are upregulated, uh, 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 this finding can be explained only if a uh, uh, pre-Mirna uh, mature and then gets into a uh, uh, mature Mirna. Uh, so uh, the, 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 the uh, phenomenon is, uh, in our opinion, quite real. Uh, by uh, putting together the uh, uh, changes in the uh, Mirna expression and the uh, potential target analysis, uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, different uh, pathways uh, that can uh, get activated. But what is important is that if we follow the uh, changes in the uh, proteome uh, uh, changes, we have especially activation of the humoral immune response and uh, uh, of the inflammatory response. So. Uh, for the first time, platelets uh, uh, can be viewed uh, not only as a, uh, a cell in, uh, implicated in the uh, primary hemostasis, but also at the uh, uh, crossroad of different uh, phenomena, such as uh, the uh, activation of the immune system and, and uh, of uh, inflammation. Um, in, in, in summary, I, I uh, uh, think that uh, uh, 
many, many other things uh, need to be done. But I think that we can uh, uh, conclude that the uh, immune system plays an important role in the phenomenon of a plaque complication. Uh, LDL, oxidized LDL, uh, are probably a very good candidate for, uh, uh, as an antigen, but probably uh, many others uh, uh, will, be, will be studied. They are activated by a specific antigen within the vulnerable uh, plaque, so it's a local phenomenon. What we see systemically, what we measure by uh, measuring CRP levels, probably reflects the uh, inflammation at the site of the vulnerable plaque. And uh, uh, in selected patients uh, and in selected plaques, uh, local uh, phenomena such as local production of uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines may predominate, and this may contribute to the occurrence uh, of uh, uh, a clinical episode of uh, acute coronary syndrome. Uh, uh, at the moment, we, of course, we cannot tell which plaques is going to, uh, uh, to give problem, but probably in the next few years, uh, uh, the, uh, um, uh, we can refine our, our uh, non-invasive imaging uh, such that we will be able to detect uh, non-invasively a, a, a vulnerable plaque. And the other concept that I think is important is that this molecule, tissue factor, is probably uh, very important because uh, it is at the crossroad of coagulation, uh, um, immunity, and inflammation, and can play a pivotal role in uh, this phenomenon. Uh, I think it's, that's it for the moment. I uh, thank you for your attention, and again, thank you for the kind invitation and uh, for letting me here. Thanks.